Thank you, everybody. Good morning and welcome all to the Financial Inclusion 2020 Global Forum. And on behalf of Axion and our sponsors, as you can see here, the City Foundation, the MasterCard Worldwide, Visa, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Western Union, MetLife, and others, we are so glad you're here. We all share a common goal, achieving full financial inclusion for everyone by the year 2020. And if you're not already convinced of the importance and impact of that vision, well, you will be by the end of this conference. Two years ago, the Center for Financial Inclusion created a roundtable discussion hosted by the City Foundation on the future of financial inclusion. We gathered many of the usual suspects and immediately came to the obvious conclusion. We had to get beyond the usual suspects. And that was the seed from which this conference grew. The need to engage a much broader group in this discussion. So we have gathered here an unprecedented array of global financial inclusion leaders. It's financial service providers, mobile network operators, NGOs, governments, bilateral and multilateral development institutions, advocates for the excluded like the youth, elderly, persons with disabilities, and more. This forum is an opportunity to hear perspectives from all of you and to get your feedback on the framework and recommendations that have been developed over these last two years. And using your input and feedback, we will chart the way forward together. So why is this goal of financial inclusion so important? There are two and a half billion people around the world who lack a bank account, and far more who lack access to other financial resources they need to build better lives for themselves and their families. We all know, perhaps better than most, that there is no single solution to this problem. Those two and a half billion people need decent health care, a useful education, safe places to live, and universal access to the financial services we all take for granted. We envision a world where everyone has a safe place to save, secure and efficient payment systems, insurance, the resources they need to send their children to school, to build a home, to grow a business, to have and create jobs. That's our vision of a financially inclusive world. As Susie described in my career, I have worked for the most capitalistic of corporations. I started off as an investment banker. I have worked in government. I have worked in NGOs. And so I've seen firsthand from many different perspectives the critical role that financial services can play in the lives of the poor, and I understand the power that comes from harnessing the capital markets. I appreciate the essential role the governments must play to make this a reality, and I know the crucial work that NGOs are doing. And I know that none of us can do this alone, and indeed no sector can do it alone, but together we are gaining momentum. Just two weeks ago, Jin Young Kim, the president of the World Bank, joined this movement. He committed the World Bank to the goal of universal financial access by the year 2020. This was an historic announcement, and it adds strong wind to our sails. Together, we are building a foundation to realize our vision for a wholly inclusive future with a full suite of high quality, convenient, useful and appropriate financial services accessible to everyone who wants them wherever they are needed. In that vision, client protection and financial capability are standard practices, and a diverse, competitive, and orderly marketplace makes it all possible. So how do we get there? Over the next few days, we will hear about significant demographic changes that are increasing the demand for financial services everywhere, and we will shed some light on the invisible market. We will consider the great technological advances that will allow us to reach more people much faster, better, and cheaper than ever before. We will discuss the work of task forces examining issues like financial capability, customer needs, technology, credit reporting, and customer protection. Much, many of us have spent our lives working and thinking about these issues. And over the next few days, we will all bring that knowledge to bear and insight on the challenge at hand. Each of you will help us to improve the existing recommendations, and I am confident that we will leave London with a true global roadmap to full financial inclusion. 
We invited you to the Global Forum because you are the leaders who can help see this vision become a reality. Together, we can chart the course to a financially inclusive world. Thanks to all of you. This event and the entire Financial Inclusion 2020 initiative could not have happened without the generosity, wisdom, and passion of our sponsors. And the City Foundation is our lead partner and a founding sponsor of FI 2020. And City has been a partner of Axion's for 48 of our 52 years. They are a long-running supporter of this whole industry. Yes, you can thank City Group. <laughs> They are a long-running supporter of this whole industry and are among the financial inclusion movement's most dedicated friends. Today, City Microfinance and its partners are working to expand access at scale, and the City Foundation supports innovative efforts to deepen the financial knowledge and skills of tomorrow's clients. City knows, as well as anyone, how critical and how achievable financial inclusion really is. And few people understand that as thoroughly as our next speaker, Michael Corbett. As the Chief Executive Officer of Citigroup, Mike oversees 200 million customer accounts and activities in more than 160 countries and jurisdictions. As a City Board member, I am privileged to work very closely with Mike, and I've come to appreciate that he is among the most thoughtful and talented financial leaders in the world today, and he totally gets what it is that we are trying to do here today. Please join me in welcoming my dear friend and colleague, City's, <clears throat> City Group's CEO, Michael Corbett.